On today's episode, we've got the latest updates on the Tesla Cybertruck, SpaceX building a second orbital launch tower for Starship, new updates for FSD beta, Model Y option package changes, the Tesla network beginning to take shape, and Tesla energy continues to grow. So let's get going. Just in case you somehow haven't heard already, there is a brand new Tesla Cybertruck announced that will be produced first at Giga Texas. After seeing new product launches in the past week for a Cyber Whistle and a children's version of the Cyberquad ATV, we were anticipating something big from Tesla. Then Elon Musk just casually dropped on Twitter that a four motor variant of the Cybertruck will actually be the first one that Tesla will build. That's right, four motors. And Elon says that the upgraded Cybertruck will have independent ultra fast response torque control of each wheel in addition to the four wheel steering feature that we heard about a few months back. Those two features combined will allow the new Cybertruck to perform both the tank turn and the crab walk maneuver, possibly even at the same time to create some kind of a crab tank. Obviously that comes as a bit of a surprise to everyone who's expecting a three motor variation of the Cybertruck to be the top tier option package and the first line to be produced and delivered. And this is definitely going to be a shock to anyone who has a pre-order in for that tri-motor Cybertruck. So the big question is, what happens now? Is the three motor now the four motor, or do you have to resubmit a pre-order to upgrade from three motors to four? Is four wheel steering exclusive to the four motor truck, or does that also get included with the tri-motor package? And how much is all of this going to cost? The old tri-motor Cybertruck was listed at $69,000, which was hilarious, but also seemed like a great deal at the time in 2019. Right now, with inflation and rising vehicle prices, supply and demand problems, that seems ludicrously cheap for a three-motor Cybertruck, and obviously a four-motor, four-wheel steering equipped truck is going to be much more expensive than that, but how much more? A hundred grand maybe? That starts to get dangerous when the similarly equipped Rivian R1T is selling at $73,000. It's basically just all questions right now, and unfortunately, I have no answers for you. I apologize. Particularly, we are curious about what options packages we are going to see when the Cybertruck finally re-emerges on the Tesla website with a configurator. Most Tesla vehicles only give you two option packages right now, the Model 3 has the most choices with three options, so it would be very unusual for the Cybertruck to come back with four trim levels, depending on the number of motors you want. If I had to guess, my prediction would be we just get four motor and dual motor as our choices going forward, so the majority of order holders are going to have to make the decision on whether they want to downgrade their original choice or upgrade to a higher spec model, or just walk away entirely. Could this be the big news that we find out on December 9th? I hope so, because it's uh, pretty damn difficult to run a news show without news. SpaceX have announced that there will be a second orbital launch tower for Starship built at the NASA Kennedy Space Center's historic launch complex 39A. We know that the first orbital Starship test launch is going to take place from the Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas, but if Starship is going to become commercially viable, then SpaceX needs more options for launching it, particularly locations that are closer to the rest of the aerospace industry. Starbase is great for testing because it is so remote, but it's not great for commercial operations with customers like NASA and Space Force. On December 3rd, Elon Musk tweeted, construction of Starship orbital launch pad at the Cape has begun. 39A is hollowed spaceflight ground, no place more deserving of a Starship launch pad. We'll have similar but improved ground systems and tower to Starbase. Starship is a very unique vehicle in a lot of ways, but one of the most unique factors is its launch tower facility. 
In order for Starship to achieve the rapid reusability that SpaceX intends for it, there needs to be a fully automated robotic tower and launch pad to accompany every flight. This is what Elon calls Mechazilla. It stacks the two stages of the ship on top of each other and primes them for launch. Then both stages of the rocket come back down to be caught by the tower's robotic arms. That does raise some questions about how much of this experimental launch and landing technique NASA are going to be cool with at one of their own launch facilities. Elon can blow up as much shit as he wants at Starbase because he owns the entire thing. NASA did issue a statement about the Starship infrastructure being built at 39A, but it's pretty vague about the launch and landing guidelines. It reads, quote, NASA signed a property agreement with SpaceX in 2014, which allows them to develop Space Launch Complex 39A to serve as a platform for the company's commercial launch activities. It's within the rights of their lease agreement to make launch infrastructure improvements within the boundaries of the pad. In 2019, NASA conducted an environmental assessment and granted permission for SpaceX to begin construction within the pad perimeter. Approval is only to build at this time. Launchings and landings will involve another approval process." End quote. Of course, the first step is to launch Starship into orbit next month from Starbase and see what happens. That landing is going straight into the ocean, but following that, we'll start to find out what happens when SpaceX actually tries to catch these things. It is going to be awesome either way. Tesla's full self-driving beta program received another upgrade recently with update version 10.6, and the new release notes show an extra emphasis on vision, object detection, and precision of movement by the vehicle. As usual, the release notes are fairly cryptic to those of us who don't have inside knowledge of the terminology, but it definitely looks like the engineers are really working hard at reducing the number of errors associated with the vision-based system. We all know by now that phantom braking has become a much bigger problem with the vision-based autopilot system, and that really needs to get fixed. It goes without saying that you can't have your car just stomping on the brakes for no reason. Hopefully that's what they mean by higher precision and lower error. Then we get some feature updates for lane mergers, which seems like another good sign that the highway stack for FSD beta is coming soon. Tesla has officially dashed the hopes of anyone still clinging to their order for a Model Y long range with a single motor and rear wheel drive. The company has contacted accounts with this vehicle reservation, advising them to change their orders because that configuration is no longer available. Like we were saying earlier on the Cybertruck news, Tesla have really been working to dial down the option packages for all of their vehicles. When the Model Y was first announced, customers were given four choices. You could have rear wheel drive with standard or long range batteries, all wheel drive with long range or performance. The rear wheel drive with standard range batteries made a brief appearance in North America, but quickly vanished again after two weeks. Then it reappeared in China this fall, but we still don't know if it's ever coming back to this side of the planet. Getting a Y with a single motor and the long range battery pack would have been a sick deal. Sure, you lose that sports car level of driving performance, but not everyone really cares about that, and the total range would have probably come out higher than the all-wheel drive version for a lower price tag. I feel like this is exactly what's going to end up playing out for anyone who had hoped to get that single-motor Cybertruck for 49 grand. It was always too good to be true. Tesla is working on integrating vehicle sharing into its app, which could be a step further towards the long-awaited Tesla network launch. This is the idea that Tesla could create their own ride-hailing app, just like Uber or Lyft, but with privately owned Tesla vehicles. At first, the network might launch with human drivers, but the real goal is to have the ride-hailing done entirely by autonomous robo-taxis. Tesla recently released a new version of its mobile app, and while it doesn't include new release notes with updated features, some internet sleuths managed to find updates within the app's code. 
One of them found that Tesla has added several mentions about vehicle sharing that they listed on Twitter as sharing your Tesla vehicle with others, asset for vehicle sharing, endpoints related to vehicle sharing. Last year, Tesla did enable owners to add drivers through a new car access feature on its website. Now it looks like Tesla is integrating that into its mobile app. The ability to share vehicles through the app is also coming soon. Elon Musk said that Tesla driver profiles are being moved to the cloud so that you can easily get your preferred settings on any Tesla vehicle. We've got a new photo from the Gigafactory in Nevada that shows off a massive order of Tesla Megapack battery units. There are over 240 Megapacks preparing for delivery, which represents about $322 million worth of revenue for Tesla just in this one little section of the parking lot. In Q3 of 2021, Tesla energy storage deployments increased by 71% over the previous year, mainly due to the massive rollout of Megapack batteries. The company is experiencing a huge demand for this product and orders are backed up into late next year. This is the whole reason Tesla decided to build that new Megapack factory. In September, the groundbreaking ceremony for the Mega Factory took place in Lanthrop, California, and in its Q3 report, Tesla said the Mega Factory will have 40 gigawatt hours of capacity, which far exceeds what they can currently produce in Nevada. In other Tesla Energy news, there is a new microgrid project that has just launched in Canada that uses power packs and power wall in combination with solar that allows a neighborhood to run their own electricity. The community called Altona Towns consists of 27 fully occupied homes and is located in Pickering, Ontario. This is what I honestly believe to be a vision of the future. There is one community station with Tesla power pack battery units. Then there are multiple houses with power wall batteries attached to rooftop solar panels and they can all work together to provide the entire community with a solar powered microgrid. In addition, all homes in Altona towns include electric vehicle charging stations, smart metering, and an integrated distribution energy service platform that can be used to manage parts of the microgrid. This could be every neighborhood in every city someday. Instead of one giant power plant trying to push out electricity to an entire state or even multiple states at once, we could give every neighborhood and town its own community battery and decentralized power generation through solar. It's a bit utopian, but we literally already have the technology right now to do it. We just need a real catalyst for change. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.